Okay, so we're going to use our old example of what we showed you in the first video of our two variables of SAT math and like math. And we're just going to show you this because it's a little simpler to see um, some of the functions of SPSS when you have just, you know, th two variables and there's not like 4,000 variables. And last time we showed you how to run frequencies, um, but, you know, one of the things that is more useful than running frequencies is actually running uh, central tendencies. So there's two ways to do that. Um, you can go to descriptives and you can run descriptives that way or you can actually add central tendencies um, to the command of running a frequency. So I'm going to do it that way first. So I'm going to go ahead and move over my two variables that I want to run. And now I'm going to add an extra option of asking SPSS to tell me what the central tendencies of these distributions are. So I'm just going to click on mean, uh, the median, and the mode. And you know the mean is the average or Y bar. Uh, median is the 50% mark where half the respondents um, are in one half and the other uh, half is the other 50%. And the mode is the most common response. And so I'm just going to click continue and then click OK. Okay, so here's my output table, and it's given me, uh, like last time, the valid uh, response, and it tells me that there's five people who answered this survey. Um, but now it's also given me um, some extra statistics, the mean, uh, telling me that the average score for like math, and if we're treating that variable as a scaling question, it's telling me that the average is three, and the average SAT score is 492. Uh, the median uh, is saying that half of the class is above three and half the class is below three and the median for my SAT math is telling me that half the class is above 570 and the other half is below 570 and then the mode is telling me that the most common response was number one um, but for like math it's also giving me a little um, uh, added comment here saying that there's multiple modes, that there isn't one single common value. And if we look here, we can actually see that, oh yeah, every single response uh, got one person, so there's no one single most popular response. Um, what happens though um, when you're running frequencies, you have to be careful that there's no missing values that might be skewing your mean and mode or median. Um, let's, for instance, look back at our data. And let's say that we had some missing response. Um, let's say, for instance, um, that people uh, didn't answer this question when they did the survey, and we told our coders to code missing value as, as 999. Uh, we chose that number because it's not a valid SAT score, but it's a, a placeholder. And let's say they gave us um, some responses as well. Um, let's say this person also didn't answer this question, neither did they give us a valid response. And we said, told our coders that negative 9 is a missing value for, for this issue. Um, let's say now we go run the descriptives again. And we see that these two missing values um, are, are skewing our mean. They're changing our averages. Um, our SAT math uh, went really high up before it was around, let me see, 492. Now our average has gone up 636. Uh, a similar thing has happened with the like math. It's actually dropped down because of this negative 9 number. So we need to get rid of these missing values. If you can look at your frequency table, it tells you on the left hand side um, what's being treated as valid. And we need to get rid of this negative 9. Um, similarly, we need to get rid of this 999. Uh, these are missing values. Uh, we know that they exist, but they're skewing uh, the co computer's calculations. So how do we do that? Um, we go into our variable view, and there's a special menu option for missing values. Um, and we just click on here, a little menu pops up, and we can just give them discrete missing values. So for my SAT math, 999 is a missing value, and I just click OK. And for my like math, negative uh, 9 is my missing value. And you notice that SPSS provides three spaces, so you can have three missing values. Um, 
you'll see when we do the GSS uh, stuff that there's multiple different values that you might want to get rid of. Uh, there's a value for not applicable, there's another value for not answered, um, and so forth. And sometimes there's more than three and we'll have to actually do something else. But when there's three or less, we can just add these missing values here. Click OK. Now, uh, when I run the same analysis, Uh, you'll notice that it's excluding those missing values um, and now we have kind of a corrected uh, average. Um, we have a 492 and we have a 3.1667 average. Um, if you look at the frequency table you can see now that percent and valid percent are giving us two different numbers because the valid percent includes only the valid scores. So um, if we're looking at for response number one uh, for like math where people didn't like math at all uh, one person constitutes around 17 percent of the valid responses whereas the this response constitutes 15 percent of all responses and you know there's different reasons why you might want to include or not include negative nine so it gives you two different um, breakdowns of percentage. Same thing happens with the SAT math. One person scored 300, has a frequency of 1, but that 1 is either a 20% or 14.3%. Um, depending on what you're interested in, if you just want to look at what is 300 in terms of a valid score, it constitutes 20% of the population. Uh, whereas if I included all values, it only constitutes 15% of the population. And you can see here on the percentage column um, that it, it breaks down that 999 constitutes 28.6% of the population. Um, so of the sample, I'm sorry. Um, and here in the valid percentage, they're taken out altogether. The cumulative percentage uh, only includes the valid percent. Okay, so here's the GSS uh, variable view, and let's work with our first variable, our abortion variable, and we can just run a quick frequency on that to see what the values are. We go to Analyze, Descriptives, Frequency, move our variable, click OK, and we see here that SPSS is treating yes, no, and DK as valid and it's treating as missing non-applicable and no answer. Um, so you see the difference between valid percent and uh, the regular percent uh, because it's excluding these missing values but don't, doesn't know is being treated as a valid um, response as well. So right now we have 40 percent saying yes they think abortion is okay for any reason and 60 percent saying no we really don't know what these percentage mean uh, if we're including this don't know variable. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the values and how these values are being defined. I'll go to the variable view and we can click on values and it tells us okay zero is being defined as non applicable, eights don't know and nine equals not answered. Um, let's look at the missing values. And we see that only 0 and 9 are being uh, included. So let's go ahead and include um, the doesn't know as m missing as well, which 8. <laughs> so uh, it was 8. And go ahead and imp imp input 8. And now we can just run the same frequency again. And now, in this new uh, frequency table, you can see that the difference is that the doesn't know is now being treated as missing, which impacts the valid percent. Now it's gone up from 39.4% to 40%. So it uh, doesn't make a huge dramatic change because only 50 people mark doesn't know. But if many more people had said doesn't know, um, this change could have been a little bit more dramatic. So let's go ahead and look at uh, a continuous variable to see how missing values are treated there. And one of the variables you'll be working with a lot is SEI, which is social economic 
uh, indicator. Uh, here we can look at the, I'm sorry, res Respondent Social Economic Index. And we can see at the values here, um, these are the missing values, um, negative 1, 99.8, and 99.9 .9 should all be treated as missing. Uh, and we can make sure that's the case by simply clicking on it. Uh, and you see that one of them is not being treated as missing. Um, so we should go ahead and type that in. We can run a frequency for this guy. Click on reset. Now to find this variable, um, I always click on this menu and then type it out, SEI, and it should lead you right to the variable. Click it over and press OK. So this gives you a long table of social economic index and you can see here again just like for discrete variables for continuous variable um, SPSS tells you what's being treated as valid, all these values over here, and what's being treated as missing, which uh, 268 people are missing, and they constitute 6%, roughly 6% of the sample. What, for instance, happens when there's more than three missing values? Uh, that becomes a little bit tricky. Um, as you can see, there's only three values that uh, you can put in for missing 